basically uh, a framework on top of uh, Qt's module called Qt Quick, which is uh, which uses a markup language called QML, and that language is basically just like any other uh, markup language out there. So uh, you know, it's for instance, it's really really similar to the syntax is very similar to CSS. So you can define uh, certain certain UI stuff and you know mark the anchors, uh, add padding and spacing and stuff like that. So that way it's quite simple. I mean, so Kirigami is basically a framework that was uh, developed by the KDE community um, on top of the Qt Quick uh, module so that um, you know, these applications that they write can work not only on your desktop but also on something like this, a mobile phone. So, so KDE also has a project called uh, Plasma Mobile, which is their entire desktop running on a phone. If anyone of you has not yet seen it, just look it up. It's a really cool project. And I think they already have a production version. So at least maybe beta ready, and it's people are actually using it. The images are out in the open. So OK, uh, that's, that was a bit of a context. So let's get into Kirigami. Um, all right, so yeah, just a brief intro about me. I'm, I'm Harish. Um, I have been working on uh, KDE projects for a while now. I think it was 2013 when I started contributing to KDE. Uh, I had the chance to work on a couple of Google Summer of Code projects with KDE, so 2015 and 2016. Um, and basically, I have been contributing to projects of uh, subgroups Plasma, which is your desktop, KDE desktop. And Copity is a uh, universal uh, messaging application. And I, I was involved on the port. Uh, of it from KD4 to KD5, which is a different API. Um, and at present, my day job is at a company called Spectral Insights. Um, we are into healthcare, and uh, we, again, we employ a, a lot of desktop applications to, you know, deploy for deployment at customer sites. That was yeah. I think I'll keep it short over here. So, all right. So, what's with the name Kirigami? Um, so I actually didn't know Kirigami was a Japanese art for, you know, art of paper crap. I had heard of origami, but apparently Kirigami adds uh, cutting as an additional technique to folding as well. So I'll take it for what it is. And uh, you know the different sheets, if I may call it layers, uh, that's a different. That is the important. Uh, that's the that's the important piece in any uh, Kirigami uh, Kirigami UI, if I may say. So. Uh, or even any Kirigami art form, I think you have different layers, and that uh, comprises of your art. So, and in a Kirigami application, uh, you have various screens, just like you have in your mobile phone. You have screens which you can swipe up and down, right? And that kind of gives you the feel of you know flicking through screens or layers, and and I think hence uh, people decided to go with this name called Kirigami. Um, and a few examples for I'm not sure if any of you have been using KDE, but uh, this application called Mio and Discover is KDE's package installer. And there's another comic book reader called Perus. And, uh, and finally, uh, public transport. That's basically a uh, desktop application that, well, it basically, you know, if you can provide an XML uh, input for the uh, public transport data, so it'll just fetch the list of stops for, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to fetch the list of stops for a certain stop in your city and we'll just show it in a nice timetable format. That's the idea behind it. It's still a work in progress project. So uh, I've been the one who's been working on it uh, for most part. So maybe after this, someone might want to work on it. So yeah, this is yeah some screenshots for you. This is the new one discovered. This is the package manager, so package installer. So you can see the packages are installed in a nice GUI format. And you have like a menu bar over here. And I think you'll follow the same structure You've noticed it's the same structure being followed across different applications. This is the comic book reader that I spoke about. Um, yeah, again, you have uh, like a main menu bar on the left, and basically what happens on the screen is what you write. You can organize your uh, your any sort of data. It could be images, it could be lists of uh, rows of columns and rows of data, and you just organize it in a proper way. And finally, the public transport. And I think the screenshot really tells you it is a work in progress project. <laughs> it's only the bottom part that you need to look at. So like I said, uh, again, the same structure. You have a global menu at the left. And you have basically rows of data. These are basically public transport data. These are, uh, so these are the stops. And these are, this could be any public transport. It could be a bus. It could be a tram or whatever. And 
it's basically showing the uh, arrival and departure to a particular stop in or rather a list of stops in Oslo. It's just an example dummy, dummy data set. So, so yeah, let's get into uh, the business now. So Kirigami has a lot of your components, all right? So j just like with Qt, uh, Qt Quick, uh, there, are load, there are loads of components, and Kirigami is no different. These are some of the components that have been provided to you. And I think a lot of these are self-explanatory. I mean, you would understand what a unit is. Units is basically uh, just uh, just a class that lets you decide the spacing and stuff like that. So yeah, you don't have to hard code the minimal spacing between two rows or columns. So you can use something like units over there. And I mean, an application header again should really tell you what it is. And you know, actions are basically um, basically you know menu items. So if I may say, and stuff like that. But I think a few important ones are well, start off with uh, the application window, which is going to be your main window, and in QML. Oh yeah, if, uh, if you ha if you ever use QML, you will realize that uh, you need a root component. Uh, I think just with even with uh, do you have a root in HTML? Well, no, I'm not sure, but of course you need a, you need a root in QML. You need you have a root component, and uh, you know all the other spacing and all the UI uh, adjustments will be related to your root to your root component. So this is the first thing you'll need in your application: a root QML component and a global menu bar. And it's not really a menu bar, but it's the left pane that you just saw on each application that was a left pane. So it's like the global context for your application. So menu bar is not on the top because you run a mobile, you don't want that the custom menu bar. So it's going to be something like this right on the left. You can swipe it in and out. And uh, then you come to a context, uh, context drawer. Yeah, this is basically once you move to a specific page, you want to be able to show some additional options uh, to your user, and this context row allows you some space on the screen, which can just uh, come in and out, and you can just kind of list the actions for you. And there's also an overlay drawer, which is again another UI element, which will come up on top of your main screen. Now, there, there might be cases where you would not want to have your UI on an entirely new page, but you might just want to you know, put, put some data on a new screen, new screen space, so this can just come up on top of your page or that's already existing, and uh, and you can just swipe up, and it should go away. And page again, well, it's within a root context. You 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 push and you pop and push pages. Pages are basically your application logic, more or less. So you push and pop pages inside inside the application window, and yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is again more like an overlay sheet, just some modal dialog they want to display. Yeah, so. But yeah, so these kind of screens, these could be some modal dialogues, and if you swipe them all the way up, uh, they go they go away. So uh, it's just some, it's almost like a prompt or a modal dialog they want to they want to display, right? So these could also be taller than the screen size itself. So these dialogues will have a scroll option. So and of course, if you scroll them all the way up, they go away. So I'll, so I'm not on my laptop, so I'm not. I'm afraid I might not be able to show you a demo, but I do have some screenshots, and I'll list out what components we were talking about. So, this is the public transport applet that we just saw, and I think it's again listing some stops for Oslo and Norway. And uh, so, let's see, uh, what components do we have here? So, this is the global drawer. This is basically your menu bar that we just spoke about. Uh, needless to say, you will not have your menu bar on the top as you would have in a desktop application. So we kind of move it to the left and we keep it globally available. And uh, these are actions. So the all the entries that you see on the left are basically actions that you have, uh, actions which will trigger new pages or any new actions, basically, uh, any new commands that you might want to access from there. And uh, yeah, I think this is quite evident as well. We are in a QML list view. It's a list of. Uh, Data that you, you that you're seeing, and each element out there is a basic list item. Kirigami has a class called basic list item, so kind of you can arrange them in a list view, so it's much more easy to read. So Q, Qt, oh yeah, Qt Quick also has a, a class called list element. So there's a list view class and there's a list element class, and the Kirigami UI has, I guess, it's just derived from the list element class, and we have a basic list item, so so it just it just fits on the UI much better. And the rest are basically, you know, QML classes. These are not Kirigami classes. So you can write QML code, push in and push out Kirigami code. You can have them both together, and they'll, they'll just look something like this. 
Um, so this is basically a very simple UI. And if, if you notice, I really haven't used a lot of uh, elements here. It's just very, very minimal elements. So there's a combo box. There's, there's labels over here arranged in, in a certain way. So I don't know if I can point out. Yeah, so these are again, so these are labels. Labels arranged in a row. And these are three combo boxes. And these are you know, basic list items arranged in a row again. And action. So if you look at it, this really might look like quite, a, quite an involved UI, but there's really what? five components over here. This is five components and I have a working UI. So that's how simple it is. I mean, I don't know how this would, you would achieve this on a web, web stack, but I think on a desktop stack, it's really, really easy. So, well, my plan was to demo a Hello World application to you all, but uh, because it's not my, my, my laptop, I can only give you the link to the code. So, well, but don't worry, I mean, uh, well, I'm not sure if you can even access these. Uh, can someone take a note of this, maybe? Uh, let's let's see. Yeah. yeah, okay. If, yeah, if someone's interested. Or you can always hit me up. I'm, I'll be around, so don't worry. Fine, I think I tried to keep it short, and uh, that was pretty much it for an introduction. Any questions from any one of you? Yeah. What was that, the last demo there? Oh, it's just a Hello World application that you will find on, you know, the K Kirigami uh, documentation page as well. So if you just Google for K KD Kirigami, you'll find the documentation page and it's the exact same code. So the same thing, but yeah. So yeah, how question. Is it, uh, so you have this transportation yeah. app, which is simple. Yeah. How easy would it be to get it to work on Android? Yeah. So I know it, it, it is. Oh yes. So the question is, how easy is it to get it working on Android, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, then I'll repeat it again. So, the, oh no. <laughs> Maybe not a good idea. Not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Sit down. No. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah. Two mics. Oh no. But can you hear me though? Yeah. Now it works. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, so uh, if you uh, if you know, cute applications can be deployed on Android. Okay. So, uh, the, so the procedure you would imagine is basically just the same, uh, but unless um, your Kirigami application uh, you has a dependency like Plasma. So, for example, uh, the application that I just showed you, it's it's a public Plasma public transport uh, applet basically. So, it depends on something called uh, Plasma data engines. So the data you get is basically coming from a Plasma data engine. So it has KDE Plasma as a dependency. So if you can figure out how to compile or you know import Plasma as a dependency on Android, the steps are same. You basically do the same thing. I mean, it's a really well-documented process to run your Qt application on Android. So there's nothing different as long as you don't have a fancy dependency. You, know, you don't do anything different at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. I personally haven't given it a shot, but uh, I really don't see why it should be any different. It is just here. Yeah. This QML, so. Okay, so, so I should look at the, the QT yeah, documentation. Yeah. Because there wasn't, I couldn't find a lot of Kirigami documentation. Well, there's, you'll find it in only one place. It's in api.kd.org, and that's where it is. So, But yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe there isn't a lot of Kirigami on Android, because I really don't think it's any different. It's just, it's, it's just a cute application. So look up the cute uh, documentation. I think they have a SDK and DK for Android. And don't introduce any fancy dependencies. You will not be able to port on Android, so you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, anything else? Anyone? Hello. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Before I leave, I'll leave you with some links. So if you have any questions, you can either shoot a mail to these couple of mailing lists: kdevel at kd.org or Plasma Devel. So Plasma is the group that is currently maintaining Kirigami. KDE is the more generic overall KDE development uh, mailing list. And if emails are not your thing, you don't want to wait for much long. With this. Drop into IRC on free node and enter hash plasma or hash KDE devel. And if you're really interested in the public transport project, enter the KDE public transport channel. And, and there'll be a few people, but I think at present, uh, this person called Ike, he's really active, and uh, you might be able to ping him. You'll also be able to ping me, but I'll probably respond after four or five days. So. So yeah, that was it for me. Uh, I hope some of you will actually try out Kirigami and Kirmal and let's see. Okay, thanks.